I've been collecting retro stuff for 20 years, trying to buy again all computers, consoles, and games I owned or just played with my friends 40 years ago. And until now, I went only for 100% authentic stuff. I wasn't interested in anything that had the slightest modern upgrade. Now, I have a more flexible approach to this. I'm okay to get some modernized items, provided I already have the same 100% genuine or plan to get it someday. The modernized one should be an addition, not a replacement. For instance, I have a modded Game Gear and Game Boy in addition to the original ones, and I'm okay to use a new USB drive in a computer if I also have the same one with its original drive. In the case of game boxes, I definitely want to get them all genuine. But in some specific cases, I realized it will be a long time until I can afford those that I need to pack up all my loose cartridges. In these cases, I've decided to use repro boxes until I can buy the real ones, which always remain my goal. True to my logic, replicas cannot replace originals, so they always remain a temporary solution and only when it's required for storage purposes. Many of my game and watch games end up damaged because these fragile items really need boxes to protect them, much more than console cartridges, for instance. So, I recently bought a few repro game boxes from Go Box It, a vendor on Etsy. You can find the details in the description of this video if you're interested. Some of them are replacement boxes for the Nintendo NES, the others for game and watch series. The originals of these boxes, even just the empty ones without games inside, are usually sold at ridiculous prices. Basically, a 100 gram piece of old cardboard would cost you a hundred dollars or more, unless it's completely falling apart and you don't want that for your collection. One dollar per gram. That's the price of cardboard in the wonderful land of retro. In the modern world, repro boxes would cost you about one tenth of that, which is a reasonable price given the acceptable quality of the product, at least the one I tried. Since I'm new to buying repro, I didn't have the opportunity to compare manufacturers. I just went for what seemed the most obvious. Etsy didn't look like some obscure Chinese website. Go Box It's products were all over it. Their boxes looked all right in the photos, and there were many positive reviews, so I decided to go with that. It's not like I'm telling you that this is the best, it's just that I tried this one and can tell you about this particular experience. I don't know if I could have found a better deal somewhere else. But as I said, I don't intend to extensively use repros. All in all, I just need a few boxes. So I tried this one, and since I'm generally satisfied, I don't feel the need to try others. There seem to be many different repro manufacturers, and I wouldn't be surprised if their quality ranged from very good to absolutely horrible. In the case of Go Box It, I find it okay as a temporary solution for boxes replacement until I can buy the original ones. An NES repro game box will cost you around $10, same thing for the manual and a few bucks for the tray and dust cover. I didn't buy any manuals so I can't tell you about them, but no doubt they're alright judging by the quality of the rest, which overall is good enough in my own opinion. I first ordered a couple of them and was satisfied with the result. So, I ordered the rest that I needed to complete my small collection, and just received the package. The boxes come as unfolded cardboard that you need to loft and fold as instructed. The process is very easy as you can see. If you also bought the plastic components to hold the cartridge in place, you can just put them inside the box like this. Then you put your original cartridge in the newly made repro box, and that's it! You have a good looking, almost original complete package. The reproduction degree of fidelity varies from one game to another. As compared to the original Mario, for example, this repro box is very good and there are not many differences to note, except the somewhat blurry screenshot photos on the back cover, which is surprising since the print definition is otherwise neat and precise. Many small text lines look fine, so why not pictures? printing configuration maybe, or poor template? For other games, you can see slight background color tone differences. 
The gray mauve is not exactly the same as on the original box. And always the same issue with screenshots on the back. They are not very neat for some obscure reason. Regarding the Game & Watch series, in addition to the box, you also have to build up the tray. This is also made of light cardboard that you need to fold up accordingly. There is sticky tape to hold it together. I'll try to show you here with these few boxes. You fold it like this. Then here. And here. And finally, here you go. Your tray is ready. Okay, I might have butchered this one, but if you do it carefully, they come up perfectly. Here again, we have background color issues, especially in the cases of golden boxes, where the repro is clearly not as dark as it should be. Otherwise, as you can see, it looks just fine, and the result is very sturdy. In conclusion, let's say that occasionally, and for some specific items, these repros come out as a good temporary solution until you can do better. Their relatively low price make them 10 times more affordable than used originals, and they'll keep your precious collection safe in the meantime. It's worth it to mention, so that people don't mix things up, these reproductions are clearly advertised as such, they are mentioned as replacement boxes and not originals. There's no ambiguity. Buyers can't take them for real ones. Like if they were called NES game boxes or even NES original game boxes, which would have been fraud, cheap, or whatever you want. Those that I saw on Etsy were clearly presented as an addition or replacement for something and not that very something. They are not hidden fakes and don't try to cheat buyers who know exactly what they're getting. And obviously we're talking about pieces of cardboard only, not the games themselves. I strongly recommend you check out this other video from the Top Hat Gaming Man, which praises repro boxes and explains very well why in some cases they are really needed. The link is in the description.